Okay, so we are at 204. We're going to go again, ahead and get started here. Uh, my name is Caroline Sorolo. I'm a partner at Castellanos in Washington, D.C., and I am the vice chair of the ABA tax section for membership, um, diversity, membership, and inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, those three buckets, um, but more importantly, I am um, a huge fan of our guest speaker today, Loretta Collins Argret, um, who many of you know is the namesake for our historic groundbreaking fellowship in the tax section. Um, the fellowship was announced at the end of 2021 and we um, accepted applications through early of 2022 and selected our inaugural class and they were notified in may of 2022 and for the past almost year have been um, taking their journey through the tax section and through the fellowship you're going to hear more about this amazing program um, it's a three-year program and so our inaugural class has two more years plus to go uh, but the application period is open right now for the 2023 class in the next um, couple of years we will balloon our number of fellows to at least 15 to 20 fellows at once which is super exciting for us um, but we wanted to start out today and I want to welcome everyone and thank you for joining I wanted to start out today by introducing you to our namesake and our dear friend Loretta Argret um, and let her give a quick introduction of herself and her thoughts on the fellowship and any other pearls of wisdom she would like to share and everyone listen in. It doesn't get much better than this. So Loretta, please. Thank you very much. First of all, I just want you to know, all of you, how happy I am about this program. And I want to say particularly thank you to all of the tax section members who are directly involved. Uh, and then the other thing, I want to speak to the um, quickly, the present fellows and any other people who might be here uh, today listening because they are interested in it. First of all, if you are a current fella, you can do this. So don't doubt yourself. And as someone who came into our profession many, 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 many years ago, I'm old, okay? Uh, we tend to doubt ourselves, but then you, you wouldn't be even in the process if you didn't think to yourself, well, I don't care what people may say that, that I, I shouldn't be here, or I can't do this. I think I'm going to give this a try because I won't be happy with myself until I have done everything I can, worked as hard as I can, given the time that I can to prove to myself that I can do this. So each of you, you can do this. Of those of you who are listening, and if you are accepted, do not question yourself because you will not be selected unless these people think you can do this and they are here to help you. Now, there's no reason given my background, I would have been able to be where I was at different stages of my career. First of all, and there's one point that I really feel very strongly about. Every lawyer, every person who wants to be a lawyer, and if you want to be successful and, and, and are able to represent your client in the way that they can be successful and you can be successful, means not that you have to be a tax lawyer, but you need to know a lot of tax. Now, let me say this because every individual, as everybody knows in business, unless you're a nonprofit, has tax all transactions. I don't care whether you want to be a business lawyer, an entertainment lawyer, a sports lawyer. You, you need to be able to identify the tax issues and hopefully uh, uh, complete the transaction in a way that is to the benefit of your client. And that so that they can be successful. Now, I did not go to law school planning to be a tax lawyer. I wanted to be a business lawyer because I had learned and observed uh, growing up in the in the South at a 
time when there was, you know, everything was awful, to be honest with you. But I had parents who taught us that uh, that there are good people in the world, and it doesn't matter what race they are or what sex or what have you. Uh, yes, there are some bad people in the world, but you can't live your life like that and trust people until you have reason not to trust them. So anyway, I want, I realized that if we had businesses in the black community or if there were women owned businesses, that was the way we really became a part of society and could, you know, move ahead. My father owned his own business and owned property. So I was a bit able to do this. So I decided that I wanted to be a business lawyer to help uh, uh, people have success with their businesses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I was, when I went as a, a, a student to do my summer clerkship, I had a summer clerkship at a large DC law firm, which is still here now. Aaron Fox, Kendall Plot, and Kevin Kahn. And I did well that summer, but I realized as the summer went on, every assignment that I got, you had to do some tax analysis. So I, you know, now I, I was obviously naive and, you know, I hadn't thought about it and all of that. So when I went back to Harvard after that first summer, I tried to take every tax course that I could. I realized I needed to learn more. And then when I uh, graduated, uh, they made me an offer. I came back on the condition that I would be uh, in the in the business section. I even had the nerve to put that in my my uh, acceptance letter. But I did get into the business section. And ultimately, as 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 you know, and I don't want to take too much time. Most of the assignments did have tax implications, and I had to work hard and, you know, talk to the right people, blah, blah, do all the research, et cetera, et cetera. Well, eventually one of the senior partners for whom I had done an assignment called me in for another one. Uh, and then as I was leaving his office one day, he says, I'm gonna put you on a committee in the tax section. Well, I, uh, I, you know, I hadn't been going to any tax section meetings. I don't even know whether I was a member at that point, but let me put it this way. I ended up on a committee in the tax section, obviously a member. It turns out that he was supposed to be in line for the next presidency, but I think he died. I don't remember all the details now, but in any event, I went to the tax section meetings. And what I want each of you to understand that, that, that every person hopefully has a circle of uh, a circle. You have your family circle. If you are spiritual, you have a spiritual circle, but then, then you have a professional circle. And those people who are in that professional circle, well, it, it's, whether it's a, a group in your city, a women's tax, a women lawyers group or whatever, over time, you get to know people, you learn what their specialties are. And in, I became a member of the, of the tax section. I eventually became a, a, the chair of one of the committee, the committee he had put me on. I met lots of people. And you know, people who you meet, who are brilliant and smart, and they really like you, it's a good feeling when you know that you can be a part of this, even though you may at that point not meet you know, the standards where they are. But keep in mind, people don't waste their time on people that they think, you know, well, you know, this is a waste of my time. And there's nothing more in life than when one is my age, or maybe not as old as me, but pretty, you know, older. When you look back on the young people who you thought when you first met them or shortly thereafter, they really had promise. And then you see later on where they went. And it's just a good feeling. Now, you wouldn't be in this room or you uh, uh, listening to this or a, a fella now if you weren't smart. So don't worry about that. You're smart. Uh, you can do this. 
it real will require you to be dedicated and to spend the time that uh, is necessary. And one of the things is actually the fellowship will teach you as well, whether it, when you want going to be a lawyer, no matter what kind, and certainly a tax lawyer, you have to learn time management. Time management. And you can do your profession and have another part of your life. Okay, you can do it. It's a lot of work. So you don't want to start something if you're not willing to do the work. I was a mother. I was a wife. Uh, and can you imagine me? So when I would go home, I would do my work while my kids were doing their, their, their homework. You know, you just learn. You, you learn all sorts of things. I'm done now. I'm not going to say anything else. Anyway, I am so happy to see all of you. Loretta, thank you so much. And really, that is so true about multitasking and com committing yourself. Um, this, this program does require an investment of time. It does require a commitment. And what you get out of it is just tenfold the value. It's just amazing. Um, I want to uh, pass the mic to my good friend, Julie Davola, who was chair of the tax section and the driver behind this with some um, also very good friends of ours in the tax section. I don't know if Joan Arnold is here. I see Alice is here. Um, but these women were just amazing behind the scenes, making sure that this came to fruition. So Julie, can I pass the, the mic to you to talk a little bit about how this came to fruition and, and uh, any other thoughts you might have? Okay. Um, yeah, Loretta is a hard act to follow. So uh, I shudder, but uh, thank you, Caroline. And uh, I helped deliver the baby, but it's Caroline's baby now. And, and she's been uh, hugely um, important in every aspect of it. But, um, but I will just, and I will just say it takes a village. So it's certainly not me. It's a whole group um, totally committed to this. Um, and I guess how I came to it, um, is it started out personal. Um, I started out uh, coming to the tax section, a woman from California when there weren't very many women and there weren't very many people from California. And I felt just like I wanted to go curl up in the fetal position somewhere because I didn't feel part of what was going on. Um, and I don't know what made me want to stay with it, um, honestly, because, and, and that's the part that I realized that was that there were were so many times when I didn't want to stay with it. Um, and and now, you know, I look and there's so many women um, and so many women in leadership, and that makes me really happy. But I don't see the diversity in the tax section that I want to see. I want to see the diversity in the tax section that I see when I walk down the streets in San Francisco or in, you know, just when we look around our country. And not just because that makes us a better tax section, but because I'm now fully committed to the idea that our tax system is so impactful, um, both in what it tells people about the values of our country and also um, how it, you know, how it impacts people. And I think it's so important to get a full diversity of views, both in, you know, when the laws are drafted, how the laws are interpreted how the laws are enforced and all, you know, people it's, so it's yes, the ABA tax section and the, and it's the tax bar too. So, um, so definitely very passionate about that, those issues. So proud of our fellows, our class of fellows that we have now. So grateful to Loretta and Caroline and all the other people who have um, helped bring this forward. So just want to um, thank everybody and thank everybody who's tuned in. I'm so happy to see um, a lot of interest in the program and hope you'll um, hope you'll seriously consider it. And um, and we look forward to meeting more of you. Thank you so much. And uh, to so many people share that experience of walking into a room and just not even knowing how to start the conversation. And really our fellows are changing the landscape just in the short time that they were named fellows and have been attending the meetings. There is a energy in the tax section that I've never experienced and I'm 
I'm quite far along too. I think I'm at 30 years now of, of practice. So I, we owe it to our fellows and we owe it to this program. I want to turn it over to each of the fellows to talk a little bit about their experience. But for everyone on, we have um, she's 60 participants at this point. I just want to review very quickly, and I know you can look online. This is a three-year program. The application deadline is April 2nd, I believe, this year. Um, last year, we received 98 applications for five slots. <laughs> and we were fortunate that the tax section with Julie's leadership expanded it to eight slots. So it's a competitive program, but that only means that you should definitely apply because it's the hot place to be. Um, it's a three-year program. It covers all ABA dues and section dues. It covers travel and lodging to the in-person meetings that are now twice a year. It covers registration for all three of our main section meetings. It provides a mentor, actually two mentors. I wanna say junior and senior, but that's probably not the correct um, terms we should use, but you get two mentors that come from different backgrounds assigned to each fellow. There's also a committee that kind of surrounds you and helps to make sure that you're all set. There's a lunch that's sponsored before at the start of every meeting where all the fellows get to come together. And then we have monthly, hopefully, depending on schedules, webinars and special events to bring people together. So for example, we've had two or three ad hoc lunches in DC where we just have some firm will say, I'm sponsoring a lunch and we'll get together. I think Baker McKenzie did one, Kaplan and Drysdale did one and we'll just bring everybody who's in the area and anyone who's not goes up on Zoom and you kind of gather. And then there's a group. Our fellows are very close and they talk without us oftentimes, which we love. And so there's a list of, and I can see Gardena smiling because I know that they've been planning things. Um, and the mentor relationships are special. Um, and since I call her out, I know she and her mentor have gone climbing together in San Diego up a mountain. And so, but there's a lot of conversation that happens. So this program really is so phenomenal, um, but that's just the rubric. Let me pass it to the fellows. And then you guys, I'm just gonna ask you to pass the baton to each one of you. If you could each take just a few minutes and talk about your experience. And since Gunna and I, I started calling you out, I'll, I'll pick you first. So introduce yourself, where, where you work now, and just talk a little bit about your experience with the fellowship and any other things, and then pass it to another fellow. Sure, um, can you all hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so um, I'm Hernana. Uh, I'm a clerk at the U.S. Tax Court, um, and when I applied for the fellowship, um, mainly, I originally started working in transactional tax work in New York City, um, at some point, I decided that I wanted to switch to either government or nonprofit type work, but I didn't really have the kind of network or community because it was, a, it was just an entirely separate thing from what I was doing. Um, so I approached, you know, my professors who put me in touch with people they knew, who put me in touch with people they knew. Um, and eventually, before I knew it, I was talking to people in the ABA um, and they were very much telling me to get involved. And I very quick, I attended one meeting that was virtual during COVID, but I found it to be really helpful even in the virtual space. Um, just to, you know, get to bounce ideas off of people and trying to figure out how to get to where I wanted to go. Um, so when, when this application came up, I knew that, you know, the ABA was, tax action was an incredible resource. Um, and I think since getting the fellowship, I've only figured that out more. Um, yeah, that's like about it. I think that, you know, naturally in a clerkship, you're always thinking about what comes next. And the fellowship has been extremely, extremely useful um, in terms of, you know, meeting people that are kind, warm, welcoming, and able to break down what those options might look like, how to get there, um, things like that. Feel free to reach out with any questions if you have having any. Thank you. And actually, that's an excellent point. Um, unless there's an objection, and I'm sure the fellows are going to be like, oh. No, um, we'll provide contact information for each of the fellows, all of their names and backgrounds and photos 
those are on the website on the Loretta Collins Argret Fellowship from website, which is beautiful. Um, hats off to the ABA for putting that together for us. Um, so please don't hesitate after this program to reach out to the fellows for a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Ganina, do you want to pass it to? I mean, I can I can just call somebody out if you don't want to be. <laughs> uh, I see Jessica, so I'm going to pass it. On there you go. All right, that's cool. Um, hi everyone, I'm Jessica Harris. I actually my background is I work in the nonprofit sector. I work at Social Services in Northern Virginia. I am currently the director of the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic there. Um, I first started off doing civil litigation, so I was first in family law and Um, so I paid it in the ABA in the fellowship. I'm more involved. Um, I get to be more involved in the dinners and in the committee. So that's really great. Fellows have gotten together and that's been really great. Just talking with them outside of the fellowship and just fellowshipping with them. So that's been a really great experience, but it's also great just seeing people who look like me be more involved in tax and first start off a text I know a great experience um and like she said if you have any questions just please feel free to reach out to me and I'm available um thanks and I don't want to be the person that's all right I'll be stop, the so. best guy here for you Jessica not a problem I'm going to reach out and see if Christopher is I know you're on mute Christopher but can you join us there yeah, we go yeah, and if you want to but, um, you know, but I will force <laughs> How's everybody doing? My name is Christopher Lincoln. Um, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I joined the ABA tax section because for two years out of law school, I thought I was the only tax attorney. Um, I couldn't find any, I guess it was because of the pandemic and I didn't know any tax, tax attorneys. When I first went to law school, I was doing criminal law and my last year of law school, I decided to get into taxes. And since I've joined the ABA, I've found um, lots of people that's always willing to help um, um, professionally and personally with any things that I need help working on in my life. Um, I'm a solo practitioner, so it's even harder for me to learn, learn the tax world, but my uh, mentor, Larry, has helped me a lot. Carolyn has helped me a lot. Um, and all of my uh, fellow um, Fellowship members have helped me a lot through, through this process. So um, if anybody wants to join, this is a great place to meet people who are in the tax world and personally. Thank you. Christopher, thank you. And Christopher mentioned his um, mentor, Larry Sanacondra, who I believe is on here. I saw him at one point. Um, we also have other mentors on this call and they don't know which one I'm gonna call out, but I'm gonna call out one or two of them at the end of the fellows so they can share their experience. But before I do that, let me see if I can pull in Charday. I don't know if Charday, Charday, you're on mute. I don't know if you can, there we go. Hi. Sharde, I don't know if we can, I think you're on mute. Can you, oh, there we go. I was double muted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay. Um, so thanks for inviting me to share my experience. My name is Sarday Murray. I'm an SBSC attorney with the IRS Chief Counsel. Um, I think we are approaching almost one year in the fellowship and I would say overall it's an incredible experience. I strongly encourage you to apply. Um, even if you are employed with the government, you still can get a whole lot out of the experience. But I would say just in general, um, there are about three main benefits to the fellowship. As everybody mentioned, one, the camaraderie. Um, sometimes like when you walk in, my, I remember my first meeting, I walked in and I was just so overwhelmed because there's just so many faces and so many people um, to the point where I started to kind of like shrink myself. But um, just having, you know, it's eight fellows and just knowing, first off, we have our own kind of private event right before or at the beginning of the meeting so that kind of eases some of the nerves and a little bit of anxiety 
And then from there, we kind of tag along and decide what meetings we're going to attend and events and panels. So just kind of having somebody in the room side by side, like a colleague and a peer, um, just really helps you just kind of unwind and just take everything in and just be able to just really be present and enjoy the experience. Um, second, we have so many people that serve on this committee. Um, so when we do have those um, events, we're able to connect with some people that you, you traditionally wouldn't really get a chance to have one-on-one -on -one time with, um, like outside of like a, a random LinkedIn message or maybe running up to somebody after a panel um, with the fellowship. You're, sometimes your mentor might you know, know a person that you've been maybe trying to connect with or meet with, or that person might just be at the room presenting themselves or at the lunch and just to greet you because you're a fellow. So just having that one-on-one -on -one, uh, opportunity to engage um, with some people that might be on your list. You might have saw them on the panel or actually read about them or, or was, you know, just wanted to connect. You probably get a, a better chance to do that as a fellow. Um, and last, um, depending on what your practice area is, I feel like sometimes post-pandemic things get very, sometimes it's really isolating. Um, even though I, I am with council, everybody in our office does tax. Um, we're all working on different projects. Um, uh, I got a credit credible opportunity to work on some teams and some of the team members are just all across the country. But for that moment, those few days, you're around your colleagues, it kind of feels like lunchtime at the cafeteria with all the cool kids um, talking about, um, you know, events and just, just having a good time. So just in general, I think it's an incredible opportunity and you should definitely apply. Excellent. Oh my gosh. I, I almost want to take snippets of this and throw them on the website. Thank you, Sade. Um, okay. I just looked and I think Fatima is with us. Don't, I know she was on mute. Let's see if she pulls herself off mute and says hello. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep, we can. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fatima Garcia. I'm based out of Chicago. I'm at Pulsinelli um, at a law firm. I do transactional tax and some tax litigation. Um, I attended the ABA tax meeting once in 2019, right before COVID hit. Um, but I remember like attending the when I attended the meeting, like I felt kind of lost because it was my first time. And it was such a big meeting because it was the May meeting. And I just felt like overwhelmed. And when the fellowship application came around, I thought it was a great opportunity maybe to get more ingrained into the ABA tax section and to create more relationships, especially, um, I think other fellows have mentioned this before. Sometimes we, as a minority, we kind of just kind of put ourselves into a little shell and sink inside because we're just afraid of stuff, um, especially when we don't know how to like communicate with other people or we haven't necessarily seen other people that look like ourselves. And I feel like the fellowship has definitely done a great job of just integrating us into the tax section, helping us meet different people. Um, for myself, I've had two great mentors. One of them, I see her, she's on here. Um, and the other opportunity that I've had was, it's allowed me to even develop more technical skills. I've had the opportunity to be on different panels and just build on my skills and kind of expose myself out to the tax community. So overall, I think it's it's a great fellowship. I've I've learned a lot. I've created new friendships. I have current friendships. Um, so if anyone's interested or has questions, again, feel free to just reach out. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I think the the fellow or the mentor you were referring to is Diana Erbson, if, if I saw her wave correctly. So yeah, I'm gonna... uh, Diana, yes. I... Yeah. <laughs> All the mentors I've seen, feel free to name them. <laughs> and we can embarrass them a little bit. That's totally fine. Um, all right. I want to see if Jamal is still on. Jamal, are you here? Yes, I'm still here. There we go. Say hi. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Jamal Akil. I'm an associate in KPMG's Washington National Tax Office. So I'm based in Washington, D.C. I joined the ABA prior to becoming part of the fellowship and I went to a few meetings. I liked it, but I didn't really find my avenue to completely get integrated into the whole system. And the ABA is huge. I think since joining the fellowship, I've learned that it's a very vast organization with a lot of resources. Um, and it's a Great opportunity to meet your mentors. My mentors are amazing. I like talking to them. Uh, they give me good career advice and just, it, it's a whole world of tax and there's so many different avenues that you can go down. 
um, to pursue a long career in tax. And they kind of give you good guideposts to figure out what, what's your personal path. Um, I think that is one of the big values that I like from the fellowship. Also the ability to go to the meetings, they pick some pretty cool places sometimes. So it's good to uh, find time to enjoy yourself when you have the opportunity to travel outside of work. Uh, and as far as the applications, um, one thing I would say is emphasize, you know, take ownership of your story, narrate your story um, and market yourself in a way, but also definitely emphasize, you know, giving back and service because that's how we keep this thing going. You know, others come in and we continue to give back and uh, keep it, keep uh, this program going. So, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to talk. Wise words. Thank you so much, Jamal. Um, I want to see if Julissa is still on. Hi, Caroline. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yes. Hello. How's everyone doing today? Um, my name is Julissa Mathis, and I'm based out of Washington, D.C. I work uh, for the IRS Office of Chief Counsel, the national office here. Um, and I'm coming up on two years in May with Office of Chief Counsel. Um, so I applied for the fellowship uh, in my first year with Chief Counsel, which uh, was great. I'll say it's a double-edged sword with the, I guess, in the logistics of, of working through what all we can do with the fellowship um, as IRS employees. Uh, but that aside, this has been like a wonderful experience uh, for me just to be part of, of this welcoming community of like-minded professionals um, who are also a wealth of, of knowledge and experience, not just when it comes to, to tax and professional like, career development, but also just in life. Because in my two mentors, I have run things by them that have like nothing to do with career development, <laughs> everything to do with life decisions that seem so important right now, which probably in the grand scheme of things are not. So that's just been great to just, just speak with other, I guess, professionals who, although they're more senior than I am, they do offer um, just a, a level of guidance that comes from them having been, you know, tax professionals at the beginning of their career at some point. So that's just been helpful to me. Um, although I had been a member of the ABA tax section for a few years, I had not really taken part in anything until the fellowship. Um, and I would say, although I've loved being part of the tax section through the fellowship, I, it did, it showed me that I should have been more involved earlier on. Um, so I kind of regret not doing that, but that's okay because I'm making up for it now, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that aside, and, and just I'll say fellowship notwithstanding, I would encourage anyone to get involved with the tax section um, because there, there's so much to do, just a lot of opportunities that exist, a lot of resources. And of course, there are ways in which to give back. And I think that's the other thing that, um the fellowship has brought out of me a desire in which to give back more to other you know just people starting out in their careers or or just even anyone at any point in their career which whom I would be able to offer any assistance or guidance so Lisa, thank you so much. And that's exactly what Loretta was trying to instill. I think if, if I could speak, just repeat what she was saying about the service. Boy, there's nothing like this program that makes you want to give back and pay it forward, which is just speaks volumes about what we're doing here. Um, I don't thank you, Julissa, for, for sharing that insight. And it's never too late. It is never too late to get involved in the section. Let me just put that out there right now. Um, I don't know if we have Professor Alice Thomas. Um, her schedule is super busy. So let me just see, I, I looked, I didn't see her on the list, um, but um, Alice Thomas is our final fellow in the inaugural class. 
Um, and I like to say she's almost like the den leader of not only the fellows, but of all of us, frankly. She, she holds us to account. She reminds us why we're here. She brings amazing ideas and ingenuity to the program. And we are so, so lucky that she is part of the inaugural class. Um, and she may, brings a smile. You cannot talk to Alice without breaking into a huge grin. So just phenomenal. Um, and one day you will get to meet her, hopefully, as we continue these types of programs. Um, the one thing I failed to mention that all the fellows have, have had opportunities to do or at least consider is speaking on panels and getting active in the committees in the tax section. So with everything that they've spoken about and all the opportunities, in addition, we ask each fellow to join at least one or two committees. And then the, if they want to, we encourage them to get involved. We introduce them to leadership and committees and try and put opportunities in front of them for speaking, writing, comment projects, things like that. So it's really such a wonderful opportunity to elevate your profile and bolster your resume and really get in front of the leadership because one of the goals of this, this program is pipeline to leadership of the sections. We want our fellows be, to be the next chair and vice chairs and council directors of the tax section. We want you to change the world. So, and we're here to help you do it. Um, Okay, can, before I can, keep going. Can yeah, I just Julie, say, Caroline, on, on that point, just emphasizing that when you're talking about, you know, people being late in their career, whether somebody's late or early or wherever they are, they're perfect for the fellowship because we are looking, we're looking to introduce the section to new people, but we're also, you know, looking for the people who can step right into leadership. So, um, so it really is a very open uh opportunity. Yes, and that's a great segue to our committee. So none of this, none of this would be happening without an amazing committee. And I, I did, um, I'm jumping to the committee, but I did want to give a quick shout out to the mentors. And be actually, before I jump to the committee, because we still have 20 minutes left, um, let me, um, I'm, I'm looking at Chris Lincoln, so I'm immediately thinking about Larry Sanicondro. Larry, are you on? Can I embarrass you and call you out for a second? Yeah, Carolyn, go ahead. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so Larry, I, I'm not sure how many hours he has invested in mentorship. And Christopher, you are special, but he does this across the board to so many because I've met many of his mentees. Um, Larry, can you just talk to us a little bit about the role of a mentor and you know what you would hope to see in future mentors? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Role of a mentor, I think, more than anything, is to facilitate opportunities for the fellows. So um, there's obviously a need to make the fellow feel comfortable um, and and introduce them to kind of everyone that you know, quite frankly. But I think to also shepherd them through the process wherever they want to be shepherded. Right. Um, I, I know. I hope Chris doesn't mind, but that that I talk about it. But we've talked about you know what Chris wants to do, where he you know, sees himself going and and I've tried to take him to those places and then introduce him to other areas where he may also be interested. Um, so I think what you'll find in the mentors consistently um, is the commitment to helping the specific fellow that they're assigned to, um, the fellows more generally, um, all which I think furthers the goals of the section as I think Julie um, and Caroline both aptly explained. Um, so not what I was expecting to be questioned about, but, but, um, you know, access to the decision makers, I guess, the committee leadership, executive leadership, um, and just making sure that all of those opportunities are presented to the fellows. Um, more than anything, I think it's probably a, a question of making sure that the fellow has someone that he or she can confide in whether it is professional advice, personal advice, um, just making sure that you have someone to be with at a networking reception, all the things that I think that when we were introduced to the section, somebody gave us, right? Um, and, and the same way Jamal had it on the head. I mean, the goal here is to pay it forward. And I think every mentor and everybody involved in committee leadership, this committee leadership is paying it forward because somebody helped pave the way for them. Um, so, Carolyn, I don't know if that answers what you wanted to know, but that's my view. 
It does. And Diana, another amazing mentor just gave you a shout out. Congratulations for becoming a fellow in the American College of Tax Council. So lots on Larry's plate these days, and yet he still manages to balance all of this. And we're very, very grateful. Thank you. Um, and I know we're going to want to save time um, for a couple of the committee members to weigh in and then some Q&A. So I just want to give a shout out to all the mentors that are on here. I see Diana, I see Sunisa Griffith, Julian Lee is on. I could go on and on as I flip through. So I'm sure that I have forgot. Lonnie's on, she's a member of the committee um, and mentor. I'm trying to think of who else is here. So if I've forgotten you as a mentor, please forgive me and just accept my deep gratitude and appreciation for your um, serving in that role. Um, okay, now I wanna pick a couple committee members to talk about the application process and what we went through the first year. Now, um, everybody remember this is a public forum and recording. <laughs> So you don't have to talk about pulling your hair out when you're like, oh, it's so fantastic. We have 98 applications. Oh my goodness, we have 98 applications. <laughs> but if you can, um, I'm just gonna call out, I saw Brandon on here. There we go. Brandon, do you mind, do you have time to come off? Yeah, yeah, thanks Caroline. There we go. I have a, <laughs> have a different background on anticipated, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so I, I will say, as, as, was, as was noted earlier, uh, the committee received 98 applications last year, which was a phenomenal turnout. It made our jobs really hard, but in the best way possible, because we had so many great applications to look through, to decipher, and really try to figure out how we were going to make that decision. So we're excited for this application cycle, too. I, I will say, I think, you know, what we're really, from my perspective, you know, we're really looking for a nice synergy and, and that synergy between someone who, through their narrative, their, their story and how they're conveying that through their application, um, is, is, it really just embodies the, the mission and the values of the fellowship in terms of promoting true diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice within the tax section. That's, that's one side. And then the other side is that demonstrated interest in tax. And everybody is coming to tax from a different background, from a different perspective. There's different practice areas. Some are much um, uh, further along on their tax journeys too. All of that is totally fine. I think really as a committee, we're really looking for folks who we can bring into the fold and get involved in the tax section who are gonna wanna stay involved in the tax section, not only through this fellowship, but beyond as well. So I think when we, you know, when we're when we look at applicants, we're really looking at those two big pillars, and kind of seeing putting those together. Who we um, who is like going to be that best you know the best candidate we can really advance and really promote them through this fellowship, and then keep them involved after. Brandon, thank you so much. I saw Lonnie on here. I don't know if she's still here. Can I call you out? Sure, I'm oh. still here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think just to echo on on Brandon's point, um, I think one thing that uh, uh, I I think a question that came across uh, me during for, from somebody who was interested in applying was, um, you know, whether JD students maybe were too young in the process to to be able to participate. And I think to Julie's point, it's not so much you know, whether you're a JD or, you know, 10 years in your career or just getting started. I think the fellowship is, I think, more about an opportunity to demonstrate your, your commitment to, to diversity, equity, and inclusion goals, but also your interest in tax and your leadership background, your ability to come in and really participate and take full advantage of the fellowship um, and be interested and in, hopefully wanting to um, take on leadership opportunities within the section, whether that be um, participating on panels, writing in publications of the section, getting involved with committees and leadership in the committees, and eventually moving on to, to the broader um, tax section leadership. Um, and for those, it, it is a competitive process, as Caroline has said many times. Um, but for those who, you know, if you don't get it this year, definitely don't give up, keep trying. Um, there's always opportunity in the future. And also the tax section has um, diversity, equity, and inclusion scholarships. So those are just one-time opportunities for you to be able to attend a meeting. 
Um, so it's not quite the fellowship program, but it is also an opportunity to help you get your foot in the door and, and get involved with the tax section and uh, attend a meeting. Thank you. And Lani, I, that is a great so segue before we start the Q&A se session. I want to remind everyone that, yes, there were 98 applications. We accepted eight. That means we had 90 amazing people that we were not able to give a slot to. But we have really tried to stay in touch with those folks. Um, I was better earlier until I got slammed this year. But we do have like an email group list where we reach out to them. We are trying to stand up a mentor program so we can offer mentors to folks that are not in the program, but they still are interested in tax and in the sector. Um, a couple tips. If you are a student, whether it's JD or LLM, you have free registration to um, the ABA and Jennifer and Guinevere will stop me if I'm wrong, and free registration to the meetings. And so it is really important, and the section, sorry. So you should be registering as a member of the ABA and the tax section and try and at least register for the meeting so you can get the materials and you can get the emails and we can introduce you to folks. Plus, I think you need to be um, registered as a member of the ABA and the tax section in order to get the discounted rates. And this is this literally is clicking on a keyboard. You can do this from home. It's so, so don't think like if I apply and I don't get the fellowship, well, that's the end of it because we're like bad pennies. We don't go away. We're right there and we're kind of coming at you and saying, please stay involved. And our goal is to change the landscape. And that's going to take more than eight people. It's going to take more than 20. It's going to take a, a village, as Julie said. So we encourage everyone to stay involved. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to all of us. We'll be providing everyone on this call with contact information for the fellows, the mentors, the committee members. You should feel free to reach out. We'll give you a link to the websites um, to answer questions, but I want to reserve the last nine minutes and I'm really trying to keep these, all these meetings to one hour or less um, to uh, answer any questions anybody has. You can just take yourself on mute, off mute and shout it out as I tell my students in my class, or you can post in the chat and I'll watch for that. Any questions? None? Okay, how about there's five dinners at a section meeting and you can go to any one of them because the section will cover the cost. Which one do you pick? <laughs> that answer to that question is talk to the fellows and they'll help guide you to some of the fun events. Um, but now we have a question. Okay, let's see. Can we, should we apply to, to both programs? Oh, Jennifer, hey, Jennifer out in San Diego or DOJ, now US Attorney's Office. Um, Okay, the answer is yes, but I think we may be mixing. So there's a fellowship program, which is the Argrat Fellowship. It's a three-year program that we've been talking about today. And then there are scholarships. If you are a fellow in the program, you don't need to apply for the scholarships because the scholarships provide exactly, you know, a subset of the same benefits. But if you are not a fellow, then you definitely consider applying for the scholarships. There are, I always want to say three to five, but then someone at the section says, no, it's only three or two to three. How many scholarships do we give out for each meeting? Is it two to three? Uh, Julie, yeah. Alice? It's usually about three. three. About three. So, and I encourage you, look, years ago, when we first announced these scholarships, oftentimes they went unfulfilled. That we just, as a section member, I was not doing a good job pushing this information out. And it was hard to get people to apply. Now that we're, we're you know, marketing them and explaining why these are so amazing, now we're getting applications. And if you are a fellowship, um, I'm sorry, a scholarship recipient, you won't be able to get away from me because I will be emailing you and going up to you at the meetings and walking you around introducing to folks to try and get you involved and get you to stay. So, um, all right, let's see. Are there any additional, I, I see one question, I may be jumping ahead, but one is, are there any additional advice on writing the application to get the fellowship? Um, okay, any, um, Let's pick a committee member to answer this. Sunisa, are you on? Can you take yourself off mute? Yeah. 
Yes. There we go. Right. I'm going to ask Tanisa and Diana to weigh in on how they reviewed the applications and any tips for writing. So go ahead, Tanisa. Yeah, um, I, I would say starting with writing, of course, proofread, but we weren't being very critical on like organization, what we really wanted to do was learn about the applicant. And so we found it helpful to learn a little bit about your background, um, you know, whether this is um, the first fam family member to be in law school, um, first family member to be interested in tax, like anything that kind of showed the diversity you would offer. Um, and we really, really cared about what your commitment to the tax section and paying it forward. Um, we wanted people that were not only looking for the benefits for themselves, but um, what they could offer to others from their new positioning. Excellent, excellent points. Diana, can you weigh in on any uh, tips? I think that you have captured it perfectly. <laughs> so, and I actually think that you guys may have been on the same team last year. I'm trying to remember, but <laughs> so yeah, the way it works with the committee is we we pair up committee members and divide up the applications, and everyone reviews batches, and then we come together. And I want to say it was almost a two-hour meeting where we talked about the applicants and. One, we're all so impressed. We all want to go back and start our career again and be one of you <laughs> because we're so impressed with the applications. Um, but I, I think those were great tips and we're always happy to answer additional questions. Are non-attorneys, law students or aspiring law students encouraged to apply? Frankly, anyone is encouraged to apply. Um, I don't know if everyone is aware of this, but the section has associate memberships for folks that are accountants or other tax professionals. And so those are members of the sections and they can certainly apply for the fellowship. Um, Julie, is there anything else I should say about that? No, I, I don't think so. I, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's open, uh, you know, completely open. Yeah. Um, so, I wouldn't say so. I just see another question in the chat. You probably saw it too about what, are there any conflicts of interest, right, to worry about? And I think there, what we thought is to the extent you're working for a government agency, you obviously probably need to run it through them. And as was mm -hmm. mentioned, there are, are sometimes issues about accepting the monetary mm -hmm. aspects of the fellowship. Um, but that doesn't, um, mean that you can't um, be a fellow, um, still have all the benefits of, mem you know, mentorship and the other kind of non-monetary aspects. But I think we would say for anybody who's working for a government agency, I would, that, you know, if, if you get selected, I don't think you have to run it by them before applying. But I think if you get selected, we would ask before you accept it that, that you run it through them. Yeah, and I'll echo um, Julie's points on that. And I actually want to give a shout out to um, Judge Foley, who's joined us today, because the tax court has been, and thank you for this, so supportive of this program and everything that we're trying to accomplish. And it's encouraged the tax court clerks to apply um, if they are interested. And as you've heard, we have at least one clerk that's active in our fellow program, and hopefully we'll have more coming through the pipeline. So Judge Foley, thank you so much for your support of this program. Um, and I know the IRS has been super encouraging. Um, and in part, I think because of the advocacy of some of the mentors who have connections with the IRS and have been very um, active in talking through the um, these issues with the agency. So this really, I come back to, it takes a village. Um, Judge Foley, anything else we should say about the support of the tax court? And by the way, the tax court has a tax trailblazers um, series, which is amazing and posted on their website. So, and Loretta was the uh, inaugural yes. speaker at that. <laughs> Yeah, this this just this just really warms my heart to see the the level of interest and and to hear the stories from from the uh, from the fellows. I mean, this is this is just been a one a wonderful a wonderful program, and I'm so I'm just so 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 delighted. You know, look, Loretta's a hero of mine. So the the fact that we have a, a program that is named in her honor and and it, it, it embodies her her spirit and her passion. For the for, for for the tax law, it it's just really encouraging for me 
to see uh, to see a program like this. And I'm just I'm just so delighted to be involved. And and I tell all of you that I have an open door, even though I'm not a, a mentor to any of the individuals on this on this call. I, I know a lot of people on this. Uh, I see a lot of names here that are familiar that I'm familiar with. I have folks that I've talked to, and and I do have an open door for individuals who uh, who would like to uh, talk about their their future in tax. So so I'm just delighted to be involved in the program. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna embarrass the judge just very quickly. If anyone wants to Google, judge wrote an amazing um, article and uh, essentially a profile of his background, which is amazing and fascinating. And um, if anyone wants to send me an email and I'll send you the link, so. <laughs> um, okay, we are at three o'clock. Loretta, can you, I'm gonna say thank you to everyone, but I'd like to give you the last word. You are our fearless leader here. Oh, you're on mute. I want to unmute you. Let's see. Loretta, I don't know if you're you're on mute. Can you? Oh, sorry. Let's see if we can pull her off mute. Okay, there I'm sorry. Go. You're good. Okay, I, I'll keep it short. It's sometimes hard, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you and keep up the good work you all are doing. I am so excited. You just made my day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Really, thank you, Loretta, everyone who joined. Please let us know there's information in the chat, but if anybody can't find a contact, send me an email and I'll connect you. And please consider applying for this wonderful program. Have a great and anybody day. can. I don't think anybody would want to contact me because I'm out of the profession now, but if <laughs> anybody would ever like to contact me, uh, you, uh, you can feel free to, you know, contact me. I'll be happy to chat with you or, you know, email or whatever. Now that is worth the price of admission, <laughs> as they say. So we will provide uh, Loretta's email address if anyone would like to reach out to her. And Loretta, thank you. What a gift that is to everyone. So, oh my goodness. All right. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much. Jennifer, Genevieve, thank you so much for, for um, encouraging this. And fellows and mentors, I will see you Friday afternoon.